Yes, yes sir. So you got the floor. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we present our formal details on the school district budget. A few weeks back, actually about a month ago, the board introduced, it, introduced the uh, tentative budget. Uh, tonight is an opportunity for um, the district to provide some additional details concerning the district, inform the public with regard to the overall budget, and then subsequently there'll be a public hearing on the budget itself. Let's start out with some district facts. And those of you that have seen public hearings before, we typically uh, review a number of facts that are relevant in comparing the district to uh, other entities uh, to bring into focus the kind of operation that this is, um, the kinds of services that are provided, and the uh, economic efforts that are undertaken throughout the course of the year. So, starting from the top, as a school district, we are the 28th largest in the state of New Jersey. We've provided over 9 million instructional hours last year. East Brunswick Public Schools is also the largest employer in the township. In terms of population, when you look at the population of the public schools with students and all levels of staff, full and part-time, we have a population of some 10,228 individuals. When we compare that to other municipalities around us, as a school district, we are larger than and pretty comparable to entire municipalities. We operate as a school district a major transit system, approximately 550 routes per year, 2.75 million miles driven annually, and transporting 2.5 million passengers. Now, certainly we don't have that many students in the district, but when we look at the number of students boarding and disembarking every day and we tally that up just as a, any other transit system would we transport approximately 2.5 million passengers as an example uh, some data that we had gotten a few years ago with uh, disney world florida which operates 280 routes with its bus system and transports some 1.8 million passengers major food service providers in terms of meals we are a very uh, significant uh, meal provider in the district uh, for lunches and in some cases breakfasts across the district and in comparison to uh, other restaurants that are local to East Brunswick. Some important facts in terms of our facilities. Now, as a school district, every one of our facilities has approximately 1.4 million square feet of space in comparison to other facilities that are well known from the Brunswick Square Mall to the U.S. Capitol to the Freehold Raceway Mall. And in terms of land space, we have 274 acres of land. Compare that to other well-known areas such as Disney's Animal Kingdom, Six Flags Great Adventure, and Helmetta, uh, the borough of Helmetta, New Jersey. What do we do in terms of economics? Stretching the dollar. And these are not new things that we're reporting, but they bear repeating because they are important in ensuring that we utilize funds in the, in the most uh, feasible way possible. We have an energy program through which we have been able to achieve cost avoidance, significant cost avoidance over the years. We function in uh, cooperative purchasing uh, endeavors with other school districts 
both within the county and statewide. We also recently began participating in a national purchasing cooperative. We provide in-house transportation services and three-tiered busing. Uh, when we look at the amount of busing that we do in-house, it is approximately 60% of the overall transportation uh, services that are provided to the district with the balance contracted through private co companies. Uh, we participate in services with the Middlesex Regional Educational Services Commission. We've cooperated with the township in a number of endeavors, uh, the, the most significant of which is in achieving uh, financing at a very significant savings to the, to the district. We've uh, participated in services with the County of Middlesex and we constantly look at what our debt obligations are to ensure that we can, uh, again, stretch the dollar, refinance wherever possible, and reallocate those funds uh, into the programs that are provided. As a revenue producer, we have various programs through the community programs operation, from the early morning program to the after school kids program, Encore at Hammershold and Churchill, and the Early Learning Academy in addition to the preparation programs for SAT, PSAT, and ACT. We provide summer camp opportunities for students, elementary enrichment, fun and fitness programs at the elementary and middle school levels, and of course, the Performing Arts Center rentals that have been uh, quite substantial uh, to the district. All of those resources in generating revenue go to support the school district. So um, they are very important pieces of the puzzle that make up uh, our operations. In terms of excellence, you know, I was going through um, lists and it's very difficult trying to pick out what are the things that we highlight. So these next several slides I think will speak for themselves. I No need for me to narrate them, but I'd like you to just take a look at the various aspects of excellence that this district has achieved, not only in groups of students, but individually, staff members, uh, as a district as in terms of what it has achieved over, over time. And these are the results of what this budget supports. Just a sampling, too many to list in full, but certainly a representation of the district's motto of excellence in academics, athletics, and the arts. So let's turn to the budget facts. Our budget, tentative budget, is presented at $146.2 million. It must be a balanced budget, and so this budget is in balance. It is comprised, in terms of the funding side of it, majority is local tax levy, supporting the schools. The second largest component in supporting the schools comes from state aid at just about $18 million. Budgeted fund balance is the third component, which is what we are estimating to be available from the current year that, that may not be utilized, which we expect not to be utilized in the current year to help support next year. And then a variety of other revenues that comprise the overall bottom line. State aid comparisons, this is a, a regular slide that, that we've shown for several years and that I believe is quite important going back to 2008, 2009 in giving the community a picture of where we were to where we are. And 2008-2009 was the last year in which we received a, a much larger share of state aid that was at just over $20 million. And then the district was, uh, was hit with a cut at the state level, 
which reduced our uh, state revenues significantly. There have been some minor gains uh, since then, but certainly nowhere near the amount that uh, had been provided back in 2008, 2009. The result is that the community has had a greater uh, burden to support in terms of local schools. When we look at the current year of state aid data versus next year's state aid, small increase in state aid itself. In the meantime, charter school, our charter school obligation is also increasing. We have an assessment to the SDA, which is the School Development Authority, uh, which the state mandates we budget. Uh, for a net state aid, which you see really is uh, a decrease from the current year to next year. Our debt service fund state aid remains the same. Debt service funds what are our mortgages on properties. When we look at our overall budget summary, with an estimated expense level at 146.2 million, general fund tax levy increase would be at 2.3 million. Our debt service fund tax is decreasing as our debt is beginning to pay off with a net tax increase of approximately $2.2 million. Mr. Leanna, what, go back historically. What are yes. some of the bigger increase percentages that, that the district has gone out with, if you, that you can think of? You know, you said 1.75 right now. Yes, currently this net is, a, is about 1.75. What are some of the larger ones? Um, well, if we go back many years, I can remember 18, 18% increase? Yes, in tax levy. So how does this compare with history? Oh, much, much, much less. And, and the cap is 2%? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now the cap is based on the general fund tax levy. Mm -hmm. uh, the general fund itself is at 2%, but mm -hmm. the debt service is mitigating it's an that offset, yeah. to offset. So what's causing yes. the debt service fund to go down? As, we, um, as I was saying in terms of our mortgages, uh, that debt is beginning to uh, trail off. Mm -hmm. So we are coming in the next year, we'll be paying off fully one of the obligations, mm -hmm. and that has a direct impact. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. What is this budget providing? And certainly, we're here for instructional purposes, to provide services to students. And so, number one is to support instructional programs, both in regular education and special education providing for curricular improvements, an investment in technology, continuing investment in technology, and provisions for capital improvements. We have a number of staffing additions and some reductions that are taking place in the next year's budget. In elementary education, we have provision for world language teachers, general education teacher, resource room teacher, basic skills teacher, ESL teacher, and instructional assistants to support the multiply disabled program. At the middle school level, language arts teacher reduction, and that is simply as a result of enrollment shifts at that level. In student services, there was an addition of a guidance counselor at the Churchill Junior High School and two guidance counselors at the high school this year which were not uh, planned for, and so those end up reflecting themselves in next year's budget as additional positions. In support operations, we are doing some reorganization there, and so there is a reduction of one director. Legal compliance provides for a payroll coordinator and then a partial reduction of one bookkeeper to uh, help to offset the cost of the legal compliance. Expanded services in the summer programs for the three-week ESL program. Expanded services of the five-week uh, program for the LLD, Behavior Disabled and Multiply Disabled Program. Continuing on with summer programs, the expanded services on five-week programs for other uh, extended year programs in resource room, autism, preschool disabled, speech and social skills. In support of instruction in the arts, in computer science,
in ILA and mathematics. in science and athletics. Curriculum instructional and support, student support. Various assessment tools that are necessary to help teachers and supervisory staff in being able to assess where students are. Math and reading screening tools. We'll be providing for document translation for those families that uh, do not have English as a uh, first language. IEP program in the special education area and some additional software support in the curriculum and instruction area. I mentioned before instructional technology investment, which is putting computers and tablets and Chromebooks in the hands of students. Network improvements with our firewall and ensuring SIPA compliance and migrating our current Novell system to a Microsoft system which will better utilize, allow the staff and students to better utilize the resources that we provide. We'll be implementing a workforce management system this next year and the budget also provides for facility improvement resources uh, through five-year funding of a lease purchase which we've allocated each year toward various major projects and I have noted here climate control and I just want to mention because I think this is of uh, significant interest to the community and to the board there's been an effort the last several years to continue to move toward uh, providing climate control air conditioning at each of the schools you know that at the, um, the newer schools, Lawrence Brook, Central, Memorial, uh, we've been able to introduce that as we've rebuilt those schools. Currently, we have um, uh, Frost, I'm sorry, we have Irwin and Chittick undergoing improvements so that those schools will be air conditioned, probably turned on sometime in September. And that leaves us with a few other schools uh, at Bound, Frost, and Warnsdorfer at the elementary level. And we are anticipating that with this budget, we will have the funds to be able to kick off uh, those programs. We've been going through the planning, so we'll be able to move forward with those programs and um, be able to get those buildings air conditioned. So that's a huge, a huge effort, a huge endeavor on the part of the district and, and the board's support for that. So I think it's uh, very important for the community to be aware. Budget information is available on the district website, also in the Office of the School Business Administrator. Uh, this is our last evening for um, discussion on budget, and the final budget adoption will take place at the May 12th meeting. Dr. Valeski. I just wanted to share with the board and the community that, uh, and thank Mr. Giuliana and his entire staff for all the work that's gone into what you've just seen in this presentation, uh, along with the, the board's finance committee, the entire board. Uh, I believe that we have put together a very comprehensive uh, financial budget that's fiscally responsible and meets the needs of a very dynamic and ever-changing school district uh, that that really um, is a challenge to do. And so I appreciate all the work that's gone into it over the many, many months uh, to produce this document. I appreciate the Disney reference. <laughs> thank you. I do like that every year. I think it gives a little perspective, but thank you very much. Perspective is important. Yes, no, I agree with that. Um, uh, Mrs. Becker. Uh, I hope everyone noticed under staffing additions under the elementary education two world language teachers. And Dr. Bolesky, I was wondering, we haven't had that in a while. I was wondering if you could tell us what this is going to look like. Mrs. Gulick, would you mind? I was hoping you'd do that. Oh, I can do it. No, I, I meant you, I was hoping oh, you asked Mrs. Here. Gulick. Are 
really excited about this and worked hard since the beginning of the year. The community has been waiting for the opportunity to bring world language back. Uh, we looked at all of our strengths that we've had before and we're going to be able to bring in two teachers. Uh, they will be able to cover all eight of our elementary schools and we're going to introduce Spanish at grade four and five in kind of a non-paper and pencil, culturally diverse way and um, our principals are excited about it. We're working on schedules already and uh, we're already looking for great Spanish teachers ready to get into our elementary schools. Well, well, so is that going to be graded on the report card? Um, we didn't get that far yet. Um, there is a curriculum that goes with it, so it will likely be on there. Our report card committee meets May 11th, um, and it will probably be uh, graded similar to the way we grade uh, music and art, where we do it one semester and then maybe not another semester or every other quarter, because the meeting will be less time. Thank you for you and your staff for all your hard work on this. Thanks. Um, because I think that the community has wanted this for a really long time, mm -hmm. and so have we, and this is a really good start. Um, are you, do you feel comfortable just talking about your vision three to five years down the road? Uh, certainly. Uh, just, just in <laughs> okay. terms of... So we want to, we're looking very, very closely at our staff to look for opportunities to bring in new languages. Um, the Spanish, we chose Spanish at the elementary level because it's a great entry level language and it's the second most <coughs> spoken language here in New Jersey, right in our area, and we, we think our students will have some experience in that. But at the upper schools, uh, we are hoping by 2017 to bring in Mandarin. Um, that is the most spoken language worldwide, and we certainly have community interest and student interest, high level student interest to begin to take that language. Um, so I am watching our staffing numbers very, very quickly so that I don't overstaff one language this year and can hopefully save that spot for the Mandarin position for next year. Thank you. I know I was putting you on the spot, but okay. I also know this is... We've been working hard on this. Yes. Thank okay. you. Before, before you leave us... <laughs> Certainly. Um, my understanding is that at the fourth and fifth grade levels, there will be two 20-minute periods per week for... Uh, our introduction of a world language for the kids. And although I think that uh, a total of 40 minutes a week doesn't sound like an excessively large mm -hmm. amount of time mm -hmm. uh, to devote to world language, mm -hmm. can you tell us what finding those 40 minutes per week has meant to our elementary curriculum? We've been working hard on the elementary schedule because we keep adding things in to the elementary schedule. And yeah, I mean, I know we've talked about the fact out. that we need to have basically uh, a 14-hour right. school day for <laughs> right. our, our youngest in. learners. To fit everything in. So we're going to, um, we're going to uh, at, at grade K to 3, uh, that will stay the same, but at grades 4 and 5, the world language and the social studies and the language arts will be more interconnected so that when we have opportunities to talk about um, perhaps grammar and social s grammar in Spanish, we can link that right into the um, language arts curriculum. When we're reading nonfiction in language arts, we can link that, that to the social studies curriculum. So we're looking for that to be a way that it's more, it's, it's, it's Spanish time. It's great, whether it's part of history so or part of language arts. Mm -hmm. More interdisciplinary, exactly right. The time's going to come from somewhere. What, where's it going to come from? So the language, by putting language arts and social studies together, we save some time right now at fourth and fifth. Language arts and social studies are separated so that um, they could be reading nonfiction in language arts, and then when they switch teachers, they read some more nonfiction in social studies. So we've asked all of our principals to schedule language arts and social studies together, and that gave us some time for world language, and it gave us some uh, more time for math. So some of the, the minutes will come out of social studies and a little bit out of, um, out of language arts. Can okay. I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Um, excuse my ignorance. When you say putting them together, do you mean that the ILA teacher will now be teaching social studies? Yes. Okay, so it's switching from the math and, okay, so mm -hmm. And that gave us a little bit more time in math. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're working on it. But everybody is on board um, with the vision and with the reasons and excited about it, now we have to get the minutes to work on the paper. Well, we used to be able to make it work, right? Because my kids, uh, 
went through the elementary system that we started language earlier than fourth grade back then. Third. Yes, we did. There Third. is definitely, you know, there is room for it, and um, we will find a way. We, we find a way for media. We find a way for world language. We will definitely find a way for it. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and is it part of your longer-term vision to bring it back even earlier? Because I remember, and I don't remember how old it might have been even as early as kindergarten or first grade when my son was singing Spanish songs and coming home. Mm -hmm. How early did it begin then, and, and do we envision doing, you know, working towards that? As long as I've been here, it's been fourth grade and up. That's my understanding. Although there are uh, districts that offer it uh, earlier, it's not usually the instruction's not usually delivered by a world language teacher. And in the in the purest delivery of a world language program, you want a world language teacher to deliver that um, instruction. So we think to bring a world language teacher and start at grade four. We require world language at six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We are meeting all of the needs that we would, all of the standards, giving our students um, a really broad experience and um, that that is, is a stronger experience than to do a little bit of something in kindergarten and first grade. So um, that's, what, that's what we're looking at right now. I think so. I think so. My last question is, what, are we, sure. what steps are we gonna take to make sure that we are not pushing one language over the other ones? Because once we go to Hammershot, we have uh, more right. languages to choose from, and then as we get into the high school, it sounds like we're gonna have even more. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to make sure that folks know that this is not necessarily the track, they may have other languages to pick? We keep talking about one of the great reasons to introduce Spanish at grade four and five is because it's an introduction to languages that are similar. It's the Romance languages. They'll talk about that. Um, and at grade six, when we have our parent night, everything is explained, and we intend to keep that there as long as possible. We, we, we don't really think we'll lose a language in this. We think we will reduce some sections in some languages, but we have the staff to continue to run all those languages that students will be able to choose. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Simmons. Just, just a, a clarification for the board and for the public and for anybody who's watching this video. Um, you may recall you may have participated in a data collection board meeting uh, where we asked the community for your input, and this is an, this is an example of already putting those comments into action. Those post-it notes got converted into a living document that was prioritized and analyzed and synthesized and sent over to uh, the Curriculum and Instruction Subcommittee uh, chaired by Dr. Cohen. And that was uh, discussed, disseminated, and then sent back up to the board to the Finance Committee and incorporated in this budget. So the Board of Education is being responsive to this community and the comments they gave at that board meeting. And I wanted to acknowledge the board's work in that. Thank you. Anything else on this? Well, 